Imagine living your life after 50 and feeling energized and excited about your future. Welcome to the Women in the Middle podcast, the podcast for women who are ready to figure out what they want and create the life they deserve. Here's your host and master certified life coach, Susie Rosenstein. Hey there, welcome back to the podcast, Women in the Middle. I'm your host, Susie Rosenstein, and I am so glad to be here with you again for this week's episode, which is another interview in the mini-series about the importance of midlife mentors, but this week, it's a little different. This week, my guest is not a woman in the middle. In fact, he's not a woman, and he's not in the middle. He's a 28-year-old guy who I've had the joy of mentoring this past year. His name is Tyson Sharp. I'm so excited to introduce you to him too, not only because he's a highly motivated client, not even because of his Australian accent, which is always fun to listen to, but as his coach, it's been so incredibly fulfilling for me to be able to guide him with mindset work and help him grow his business. I'm a firm believer in the importance of both having a mentor in midlife but also being a mentor in midlife. Tyson looked at his coaching business and realized he wasn't getting the results he wanted to see. Like so many midlife women, he felt stuck. He was still passionate and working hard each day at the business, so procrastination wasn't the issue. But he had no clients and was pretty sure the problem had to be something to do with his internal thought patterns, so he reached out for help. I think you'll agree that his story of transitioning from student to stuck to creating a business is pretty similar to the midlife transition story of so many midlife women. I love when there's something to be learned from intergenerational collaboration. And you'll see that you don't have to be 50 to be highly motivated with some self-sabotaging thought patterns. As a woman in the middle, I know you'll get a lot from Tyson's personal story you'll be able to relate to some of the changes you're trying to make and also be able to relate it to some of the experiences your adult kids are trying to make. I really do think you're going to enjoy this interview. Hi, Tyson. Welcome to the Women in the Middle podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Let's have some fun. So you guys might have uh, picked up that Tyson is not a woman in the middle, but we invited him anyway because of the topic of the mini series, which is the importance of mentors in midlife. So Tyson and I met, and I uh, wanted him to tell you a little bit about how we met because we've really um, had a great relationship with coaching, and there's a really interesting story here. So take it away, Tyson. I usually ask my clients what was going on in their 40s. So with you, I'm going to adjust that question a little bit. Tyson, what was going on in your 20s? <laughs> well, I can, uh, I, can, I can channel my, my inner midlife woman right now and sort of, because <laughs> <and laughs> I think everyone, everyone can relate to someone going in, in a transition. But in my 20s, you know, the reason why I got into a little, a little bit of a funk was that I graduated six years of university, you know, obviously I'm interested in psychology. I loved um, understanding how the brain works, um, but afterwards I had really no idea what to do. I I was I was lost. I was stuck. I didn't know what path to go in. Um, everyone said I was going to become a psychologist, but I didn't want to work with mental disorders. Um, so to avoid the decision, I moved to Canada. I uh, pretty much told myself, okay, I'm going to go on a traveling journey instead of making a big, bold decision. And in doing that, I'd, I traveled for two years. And although I was happy day in, day out, um, something was missing. Definitely something was missing. Um, and I, at the time, I didn't know what it was, but I knew that I just felt off and I didn't, I didn't have that, uh, that level of fulfillment that I do in my day-to-day life nowadays. Oh my gosh, that's exactly what midlife women say when they're in a midlife funk. And that's really one of the reasons I knew that this conversation we're having today would be so useful um, to midlife women, women in the middle, not just because of being in a funk, but also because of empty nest. So really, you are the age of many of our um, kids, many of the listeners' kids. How old are you now? I'm 28. 
you're, you're 28, 28, right. So um, a lot of the listeners are dealing with empty nest or somewhere in the process of empty nest. Like the kids are leaving soon, the kids are gone, they're back and forth, and then they're finally gone. As I like to say, off the payroll. They're off the payroll <laughs> when they're finally not relying on us for any support. But what typically happens is this feeling of stuck, feeling in a funk, knowing something's off, being a little bit more confused than normal, when normally um, many of my clients talk about it's never been so difficult to make some decisions and to have some clarity. But when they're in a funk, for some reason, everything's very murky. And it sounds like that's kind of what was going on with you too. Yeah, absolutely. I sort of, I felt, I felt clouded because I knew that I did have some interests. I knew I did have some passions, um, but I just never took consistent action or any sort of big action towards that. Um, and, you know, I really started, I really started making the shift when I was living in Toronto. I was living in a tiny room. It wasn't an apartment. It was a room. Um, and it was probably about, it was probably about nine foot by about 14 foot, something like that. Um, wow. So I was, living, I was living there by myself. I, had, I had, um, no, had no kitchen, no lounge room. All I had was a bed, a toaster oven, and, you know, and just basically a place to put my clothes. Um, and, and, you know, the biggest challenge I had to face those days was literally um, stopping the mice in the walls from scratching through any holes to get into my bedroom. Um, that was seriously the biggest challenge that I had. Those were the days. I'm having a flashback now to the to the mid '80s, early '90s when I was in some apartments that weren't uh, that grand. But certainly, it wasn't as bad as what you're talking about. But this is quite a shift for you because you live in Australia. You're in Toronto, big city, and now you're dealing in a you know with a weird situation, a room, a shoebox, <laughs> and some noisy mice. Yes, that's it. And I was, um, I was, I was working as a dishwasher in the local um, Mexican restaurant. And you know, I was, uh, like I said, I was happy day in day out because I would tell myself the story that I was in a traveling phase. Um, so that was to basically get by. But but deep down, I knew I wasn't going anywhere. I knew I wasn't making any big decisions on how to progress. Um, and I felt embarrassed. I felt, uh, you know, I felt like I wasn't doing anything, anything with my life. I wasn't moving forward in any way. Um, and despite traveling and having fun, um, like I said, there was that lack of, there was a lack of growth and the, the lack of meaning and purpose in my life. Um, and so that's where I think it really resonates with anyone who's making a transition um, can really feel that level of hopelessness. Oh my gosh, especially when you said lack of growth, a lot of women in the middle talk about feeling stagnant. And uh, from our perspective, it's often because we've been in a job way too long, like career malaise. And here you were also in a transition. You have not been in a job too long, but you still connected with that lack of growth. And it can really do a number on, on your feelings. That's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's sort of... it. it takes me back from reminding myself of where I came from um, really just gives you gives me a fresh perspective on how far I've come in such a short amount of time and if I can do if I can do that with uh, with where I was at and my mental ability and where I was emotionally then I definitely feel that anyone can sort of can sort of move forward step by step so interviews like this and and you know listening to podcasts like this really help people see that fresh perspective and so then they can, they can start applying uh, some new tools in their life, I think. Definitely. It's so important to share these stories. And one of the things I've been talking about this week, actually, is just how important it is to know that you're not alone. And I was at a retreat this weekend with a, a whack of midlife women. And that was the main thing. It was like the biggest epiphany. We were going around a table. There were about 20 women there. And I asked them to share their age and one problem that they wanted to work on. And I could just see the heads exploding on how much these women had in common and how much they, uh, they just had to share with each other. They really weren't alone. I got feedback on that too. I'm still getting emails about just that little experience. So I agree. I think it's so important 
to share this your story and any story of somebody being stuck and afraid and then what they do to get on the other side of it. That's my big motivation with these interviews on the Women in the Middle podcast. Yeah, and exactly when um, the, the thing that I think resonates with a lot of people is because the longer you don't make the decision, the harder it is. And that was sort of with me, the longer I made the decision, okay, well, I'm not going to act now. I'm just going to travel. I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to, you know, move from, move from city to city or, or experiment and, and move from going throughout Canada and trying different things and different jobs and moving around and seeing, making friends. The, the, the more time I, I didn't spend on making those big, bold decisions of what I knew I had to make, um, the more excuses I found, the more reasons I found for not making that decision, but the worse I felt. So there was that internal conflict. So interesting that you think you're sparing yourself because you're, you're stuck and you can't even make a decision, but it actually caused more pain. I can totally relate to that. When I was stuck and in a big spin, it was five years, five years of in a spin uh, and not being happy at my job that looked absolutely amazing on paper. There was nothing wrong with my job except I was there too long. And it really, um, the way I was thinking about it, and I was just kind of hoping that I would get zapped by some lightning bolt of inspiration and clarity. <laughs> it never came. I got laid off. <laughs> <laughs> that was your inspiration. That was, that was, your, that was your lightning bolt. <laughs> exactly. I <laughs> uh, like that. And yeah, that was the same with me. It was caught in, and similar, um, on similar lines, I was sort of still waiting for that decision. I was still waiting for something to hit me, something to come across where I was like, okay, that is the thing where I want to go to. That is the, my new passion. That is my new direction. That's why I want to start taking action steps towards. I was, I was waiting for it and it, it just never came. Right. And, and that's sort of, that's sort of similar with a lot of people. And, and I find that if you wait long enough and the pain gets to a certain threshold, then you're forced to make a decision. So Nowadays, I'd rather take action consistently and make that decision consciously rather than, um, rather than waiting for something to happen where I am forced to make a decision by my own pain. That's so true. And one of the um, quotes that I like to share from Brooke Castillo of the Life Coach School, she says that the fastest way out of confusion is to make a decision. And it yeah. seems so obvious, but sometimes you don't need all the answers to make a decision there's just so much value in actually making the decision. It unsticks you and then you have new perspective and more to draw on. So yeah, it's um, being stuck is painful. Agreed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and like you said, when you, the, the shift that I made from, from going from hopelessness and, you know, feeling sorry for myself and, and feeling lost and stuck was when I just simply started taking small bits of action in terms of personal development. I saw a, I saw a YouTube clip by a guy, Ty Lopez. Some people might know Ty Lopez. Um, he's got all these YouTube, um, YouTube ads out that people see all the time if you're into business and that sort of thing. But I just simply just started on a program. He had a simple little program where you watch some videos and his, his teachings are all about um, you know, developing the, the principles of success, the mindset, you know, how to achieve more health, wealth, love, and happiness by applying these principles. And that was the starting journey of my, of my personal development. And that's when I started feeling things start to shift from within. And that's when the, that was the ball starting to roll, right? That was the moment starting. How did you even make that decision though? Like who told you that it existed? Were you searching for something like what happened between misery and stagnation and, and actually taking that little step? Yeah. Well, I, um, I wasn't actively looking, but I probably was unconsciously. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, I knew something, I knew something had to change. I knew something had to change, but I wasn't actively going out and seeking it. But this, um, this ad just popped up and I was like, you know what? It was, it was $67 at the time, which seemed like a lot of money to me being a poor traveling Australian. And I'm yeah. like, if, if I'm, um, I'm going to make a decision, if I'm going to change something, 
I found out, you know, one of the lessons I learned along the way is if I want my external life to change, I need to change from within. I need to change within first. And that's when I started to make the decision, all right, I'm going to learn. I'm going to start to fall in love with learning and start improving my life from the inside out. And I did that with the starting, with what I just described, the starting of that personal development journey. Yeah, it's a big difference between waiting for something to happen and making something happen. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so that's what I found. Although, it, although I stumbled across it, I learned some lessons in that decision that I need to start going out there and actively seeking how to, how to improve, actively seeking how to make better decisions, actively seeking what's going to find, find the, uh, how I'm going to find the drive, the passion, the insight, the wisdom within me so I can consistently improve and consistently find that growth from within. And how many years ago was this? This was four years ago, four and a half, something like that. So you were a f- pretty fresh out of university, 24-ish. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I was, yeah, out of university. I, um, I basically, basically, like I said, didn't know what I wanted to do, but I wasn't used to making big decisions. And I, I, throughout my university, I went with the flow. I'm an easygoing guy. It wasn't in my nature to make some big, bold decisions. And I've made some big, bold decisions ever since then, um, especially once I got into personal development, once I started really improving. Um, I still didn't know where to channel this new me. Um, but that was until I came across um, some life coaching courses and especially the one um, Robbins Madonna's training, which is the one online course that Tony Robbins has teaching strategic intervention coaching. And that's where I learned my school, my, my skills and tools of how to really shift people. Um, but that investment when I was in Canada and still a poor traveling Australian, <laughs> the investment was half of everything I had in the bank. Literally, I remember it like it was yesterday. I looked at the investment. I'm like, that is literally half of everything in, my, in the bank. And that is a big, bold decision. And it, it scared the shit out of me. And I, didn't <laughs> totally. know, I, I really didn't know what, um, what I wanted to do. I, I, all, I knew is, all I knew was I felt it within that I was shifting. And then I, I decided, you know what? If I don't make this decision, if I don't know... If I, don't, if I don't make this decision, then I'm going to live with regret. I, I'm always going to live in, with regret. But if I use my courage right now, if I use my passion, my insight and my creativity, um, I can make this decision from a place of my best self and not from a place of fear. And oh, my gosh, I, exactly. I in. Yeah, I, I so um, talking, in. you're talking about regret-proofing your life basically, right? And I love that even at your young age – you had a sense that if you don't do this, you may regret it. And the other thing that you said that really uh, struck me was just that you're an easygoing guy. You were going along with the flow. So another thing, a way that that's similar is at our age, we go along with the flow and we blink and 20 years went by. So what happened, like it's, it might sound crazy, but that is what happens. It's like we're in chaos and we're just going with the flow, managing kids, establishing a life, paying a mortgage, like just getting in life. And then all of a sudden, decades have gone by. Yeah. We're going along with the flow, not stopping to think about where we are, what we want, and what we actually might regret if more time like that goes by. So I know it and seems then, like it was a long time, but it's at least, <laughs> I, think, yeah. I think it was amazing that you jumped on it. Now, during this phase... I'm just wondering if you sensed that you needed a mentor at this point or it was still a little murky what was going to happen and how you were going to continue to grow. Yeah, it was, it was implanted in my early personal development. I was learning the principles of success and time and time again, the, um, the principle came up, look, if you want to get to the next level, if you want to explore your own level of success and, you know, apply your true potential, you need a mentor. You need someone who's been there, done that. You need someone who you can advise. You need someone who, um, you know, can show you not only a little bit of a blueprint, um, but also someone who you can use as a soundboard and really someone who you can, you know, someone you can confine in that, that you know you can go somewhere where your your ideas and your um you know, you, the, the plan you have for the future in terms of your, your passion itself, 
that's, you're going to have someone there that can guide you. And that principle was placed in my head early on in my, in my um, personal development journey. Um, but it was only until I, it was only until I started my own business when I started really building my own coaching brand, my own coaching business. Um, when I really looked at the results that I had as a pattern for the last, you know, you know, six to 12 months and realized that the pattern I had was not leading to the results that I wanted and understanding what we understand. I knew that because of the external circumstances that were happening, the external results it had to become, it had to be because of a pattern that was happening within me. And that's when I'm like, okay, well, I, I definitely need a coach. If not only because I want to be a great coach that I also need to be coached, but also because I believe in the, the value of a mentor. I believe in the value of someone who can, who can guide you, who can look at your circumstances, look at your life from an outside perspective, and you can start identifying the patterns that are currently unconscious to you. Yeah, it's so true. Like, it doesn't matter how much training you have when it comes to trying to get perspective on what's going on in your own brain. It can be tricky, and an outside person who's neutral and looking for patterns and really focusing on digging into your brain and prompting you and pushing you and asking you interesting questions to turn things upside down and shake up your perspective a bit. It's, it's so much different than when you're in your own mess trying to sort things out. Yeah, exactly. The way I describe it, like if anyone's going through their life right now and if anyone, obviously people are diving in deep in their life. And if, like you described, if they're going with the flow or even if they're trying to really get outside their comfort zone and make some progress, um, there's just some areas of your life that you're like a fly banging your head against the window trying to get to the garden, right? That's the way I describe it. That's the metaphor I use because that, that described me perfectly where I was trying to get to the garden and I was banging my head against this window, not seeing that bit, that, that um, sheet of glass that was stopping me, that was holding me back. And that was obviously my internal patterns. And anyone who wants to succeed at the next level, who wants to show what they're capable of, who wants to be that example of what's possible, they're the types of things, they're the types of patterns that you need to recognize. And you can do that through a mentor or a coach or someone who can, who's trained to see your life from an outside perspective, pick out those patterns and raise some awareness around them so that you can make that shift. Yeah. And also, I, I love that you talked about the investment that you made in yourself. And I remember how uncomfortable I was when I hired my first coach as an entrepreneur. And I was so afraid to spend the money. And it seemed so foreign to me to make that kind of investment in myself. Whereas if it were my kids and they got into an amazing program, and right now I have three kids in university, I mean, it's just par for the course. You just pay, you support, it's education, blah, blah, blah. But in midlife, to turn, uh, to turn the investment on me and to invest in myself, I was squirming like crazy. So, and I wasn't down to my last, you know, I wasn't spending 50% of my uh, savings, but still I was so uncomfortable. So I love that you recognize that. And now that I've done it, it's not difficult for me anymore to make yeah. an investment because I know the, the power of coaching and the way it pays off. It just pays off in a way that's almost hard to imagine. Yeah, really? exactly. Yeah, back then when I made the decision, I didn't realize it at the time. Um, at the time, I thought I was just making a, a big, bold decision, a big decision where I was telling myself that I was serious about making this change, making this shift. Um, but looking at it back now, it wasn't, it wasn't just that I made a big decision. It was now how I made decisions. It was now that how I made all decisions moving forward. And something that, you know, the listeners can take away something that I knew back then. And that I know now is that I made the decision like I was all in. If you can make the decision like you're all in, then when you do that, you not only make that decision, but you also shift a part of your identity. You're like, now I'm the kind of person who goes all in. It seems like that's what happened with you as well with the investment with coaching. You're like, now I'm the kind of person who believes in coaching. Now I'm the kind of person who invests in myself, not just my kids, right? Totally. It was a giant shift. And, and I didn't believe in coaching when I first heard about it. <laughs> I, I thought it was just kind of weird and 
I, yeah. I didn't know until I hired a coach. And then I definitely noticed the same thing with that transition of investing in myself. And going all in is a decision. It's an intentional thought. It makes you feel completely differently than when you uh, aren't sure of the result you're going to get. But if you go all in, you just start believing that this decision is going to be amazing for you. And then you end up producing a result that completely proves your thought. Yeah, I love, I love that thought. I love that, that line of thinking where it wasn't just that I jumped in. It was that I had the confidence that no matter what happened, I was going to get the most out of this. I was going to apply my best self and my tools and my strategies and what I had learned along the way in my personal development journey, I was going to pay the most attention to it. And because it was such a significant investment, I was like a learning machine. I would jump on these, on, in this course, I would watch all these videos of Tony Robbins doing all these massive shifts with, these, um, with his clients and with these people at these, at, these, at these seminars that he does. And I was like bawling my eyes out while, I was, while watching these transformations and I was writing every single you know, every single word he would say, because it was such a big investment for me, that's when I applied a huge amount of myself and a huge amount of my time, energy, effort, passion in learning as much as I could. And I think that's with, with my clients. Now I coach a lot of business owners and a lot of them need to make that big, bold decision. A lot of them need to have that push to get them through to make them feel like they're all in. And because I can come with so much certainty that I actually did it myself, I think that's what gives them the confidence to also do the same. Definitely. So how, then what happened? How did a 55-year-old midlife woman in Toronto end up being a mentor of yours, a 28-year-old guy in Australia? What the heck happened? Look, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Um, basically I, I looked for a coach, um, because of the reasons I described before, I didn't like the results I was getting. I clearly saw the patterns within myself were not leading to those results. And I wanted to un uncover what it was within my own patterns that was currently unconscious to me. And I, I was, a, I'm a big fan of, of Brooke Castillo at the life coach school and her podcast. And I decided to just jump on her website, see what coaches were available I actually, um, I, I wanted to look and just see what options there were of people who were studying life coaching and, and if we could, if, if I could jump in and, and gain them some experience and, and give them some, and give them some money and, and really help in that way. Um, but then once I came across, you know, some people, I talked to some people and I, was, I reached out and I was like, okay, well, what's going on here? How can I, how can I work with you? And I, I reached out to about three, four, five different coaches and then I came, I came across you who seemed like um, you had the type of branding, the type of, um, the type of feel, the type of um, warmth of someone who just really wants to help, who really wants to um, explore someone's, um, you know, someone's mind. And I was like, well, if she can help me, I'm not a midlife woman, clearly, but maybe she would be open to helping coach me on my mind and on my business. And that's when I reached out to you and, um, and clearly things just flowed from there. Everything sort of connected. And obviously we, uh, we resonate with each other in, in multiple different levels. Um, but that's, that's really how we got started. It was the funniest thing. So when people want to work with me, they go to my website and they fill out a form and they book a free consult. And so Tyson's like, I'm not a midlife woman. Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> It was so funny. So, I just wanted to be open and honest. <laughs> yeah, just in case, just in case I didn't catch on. Yeah, it was so funny. And I guess what's really been so exciting for me is as um, as somebody who is fascinated by this whole idea of mentorship in midlife, uh, I have certainly got a ton out of mentors in my life since I've become an entrepreneur. And as a listener of Women in the Middle podcast, you may have heard some of these. Um, interviews with some of my significant mentors as an entrepreneur. So it's been Brooke Castillo, it's been Kendrick Shope, Jenny She, and I have another interview coming up soon too, but I don't want to blow the surprise. But um, these links will be posted in the show notes. And it's just was such an amazing experience to talk to these women who have taught me so much. I was very specific about what I learned from them. And 
to be able to tell them the way they had an impact on my life personally was amazing. And then also I asked them questions about what kinds of things they learned from people who have been mentors in their lives. And I just um, am so aware of this and about how much I got out of this relationship with you, with coaching you, Tyson, because, you know, as an older and wiser woman, (laughs) as a midlife gal, it feels amazing to be able to share information I've learned, knowledge I've had, experiences that I've had uh, with somebody who's hungry to learn that information. It just feels so good. And one of the things that so many midlife people are looking for is more fulfillment. We have this feeling that life is passing us by and is there more and am I wasting my time? And we're looking for ways to feel more fulfilled. And being a mentor, being able to offer um, you information that was meaningful, helped you grow your business, um, help you have, I know that this experience that I've had has helped you uh, have an impact on your business. And personally, um, I've been able to grow and learn too as I'm coaching you. So I just want to thank you for being such an amazing client somebody who's not afraid of technology, even when you don't know what the hell you're doing, you're not fearful, which is certainly, I cannot say the same for myself. It's something I've been working on. So I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that, uh, what you were looking for uh, when we did start coaching and some of the ways that you've been able to really uh, turn your business upside down and get those results that you were looking for. Yeah, sure. So, um, You know, what I was looking for was obviously someone who had the results that I wanted, Um, clearly someone who I connected with um, at at a personal level. And, you know, I wanted, I wanted someone who, who was, I wanted someone who was going to help me move forward in my business, not only obviously for the business results, but also help me become the business owner. Um, It's a very big difference. I just, I just didn't want to grow my coaching business for them or more clients, more income, more freedom, but I wanted to become that business owner. And the reason, the reason why that, the reasons why I've made these shifts and the reasons why I'm starting to get the results that I'm getting is because you definitely helped me identify those unconscious thoughts that I was innocently believing when I was anyone who's into um, understanding their mind. And, and obviously, obviously Susie's work, you know, that, there are some thoughts that you're believing that lead to certain emotional patterns um, that you're simply just unaware of. And so the first thing that I really recognized was that I was believing the thoughts that, you know, I don't have enough clients yet. I don't have enough money. I'm a new coach and I need to prove myself. All these thoughts that were going on in my head that I just, just simply thought were fact. I, I thought I was just observing reality despite how much personal development I had been on, despite how much, um, despite how much I study this stuff. It was still unconscious to me. And, and understanding that was, was truly a, a key shift for me. Um, but also, the, also, like I described before, in terms of shifting my identity, it was a clear, a clear breakthrough for me. Once I, once I moved from being a, a new coach who needs to prove myself to now being a successful business owner, a successful coach who's getting clear results for, for my clients and everything's on the rise, it's, it's not to do specifically with results externally, but what's, what's happening internally of how I view myself. That's really, been, that's really been the bigger shift. Yeah, and one of the things we worked on very early on, once those unconscious thoughts, those stinky poisonous thoughts became very obvious to you, um, is we worked on ways that you could be of service and how you could step into your expertise. And so stepping into your expertise is another way that midlife women are not comfortable. Uh, But you had a lot to teach other people. You have a master's degree, you have a background in psychology, you you have invested heavily in yourself, and you are ready to help other people. But the more that you and others um, focus on fears and insecurities and scarcity mindset and just believing that you're not ready or that you have to prove something to somebody else, rather then focusing on the way you're able to help your people, it just stops you. And as soon as you focus on the way you're able to help your people, you just come to light, right? Because you have these skills, you were just getting in your own way. 
So one yeah. of the things that you really turned up the volume on, the volume on was your blogging. What was it like? Because when we started, you, didn't, you weren't blogging and you didn't have your slogan about doubling your discipline. You'd never done a Facebook Live and you weren't making um, offers, really. You weren't being of service. You weren't teaching. You weren't impacting and sharing. Uh, so what, the way I see it is like you cranked on the blogs and you started with the Facebook Lives and things started to fly. How do you see yeah. it? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think what you sort of talked about before is around, you know, now I feel like when I take action, I do it. I don't let the fear stop me. And, and, you know, like you described before in terms of the technology, I'm willing to just jump into anything and just see how it goes and I try and my best to control my state as I do it. And so that my best self is, is running the show rather than my fear but it's really just jumping in and doing something you've never done before, knowing you're going to be okay. Knowing that if you're just leading with a place of service, a place of gratitude, a place of even having a playful fun about you, um, that is what I see jumping into it and, and applying, applying those qualities will know that you're not leading with fear. You're, you're leading with sort of more of your best self. So when I jumped into blogging, when I jumped into Facebook lives, when I, you know, when I, I jump into getting on podcasts like this, I've, I've been on several podcasts now, about 10 um, as, a, as a guest speaker, um, even launching you know, into group coaching, now I'm creating my own course. So many things that I just jump into and I just have no idea how it's going to turn out. Um, but I think it turned, I think, it, you know, going full circle, when I started making that investment of half of everything out in the bank, that showed me that I can make scary decisions and I don't have to be led by fear. So jumping into all those kinds of things in terms of, in terms of blogging, Facebook lives, I knew I was going to be fine. It was going to be a little bit scary, but there's a difference between feeling fear and moving forward as your best self between moving forward with fear and being very hesitant, very distracted, very, uh, you know, very, demotivated i would just sort of describe it but if you can jump in and be all in like like we talked about before if you can be all in um in anything that you do any any step you move forward with then clearly you're going to start to see some results whether it's the external or the internal absolutely so we you know we had to narrow that niche down you had to do a lot of work at the beginning and really clarify who are the people that you want to try to find on purpose and then I guess you, you just didn't really seem to have a clear path of what to do next. So we took a good look at your skills. We looked at uh, your goals. And it became very clear that you needed to start by being of service. You set up a Facebook group. It exploded. You went nuts in there being of service. You gave so much value, so many Facebook lives. And then at some point, you know, we worked on that slogan, double your discipline, which really was in line with your niche and the work you wanted to do and the benefits of the transformation that people would be going through when they work with you. And then I remember I'm like, uh, yeah, it's time to start blogging. And then at some point I said, maybe it's time for you to develop that as a course. We had to work on a freebie. And then uh, with, the, with the coaching in your group, like every, every time we did some brainstorming about what might work, before we were off our call, you'd started creating it. <laughs> it was, you warned me that you were fast at the beginning. And, and that's what's been so fun about having you as a client and also um, helping you grow. Because once we have a very candid conversation about what you're trying to accomplish and we come up with a strategy, you're very quick to implement. So it's clear that you have those thoughts under control, and you're not at the effect of your fear and uncertainty anymore. You just do stuff anyway, which is the way to grow. Yeah, and that's the one thing you said. One thing you said about me that resonated with with, uh, with my mind is that you said, "Yeah, it seems like you have very little drama going on in your head," <laughs> and and that's what I that's what I sort of describe myself as. It's you know the, the drama the drama will always be there. Clearly, we all have positive and negative thoughts flowing through our head. But one of the secrets is to just not believing everything that goes on in your head. And you can anticipate you're going to have some, you know, some poisonous thoughts and thoughts that are going to lead you in a downward spiral if you believe them. You can anticipate them coming up, but you don't have to believe them. 
And as soon as I have, as soon as you present the new idea of blogging, of doing my Facebook live, of launching a group, of deciding on my niche and going with it and being of service, clearly in my mind, I'm going to, I'm thinking we're going to die. Right. (laughs) Absolutely. Scary stuff. That's the thought, that's the thought that, that happens, but recognizing that you don't have to believe it. Um, and you can continue moving forward from a place of, from a place of passion, from a place of, you know, insight and a place of genuine love for wanting to serve. Cause one thing, one thing I've learned on my journey, if you're focused on giving and you're focused on contribution and serving your scarcity moves away, your scarcity exactly. completely moves away because you're focused because scarcity is really evolved around the lack of the lack of everything, right? The lack of resources you have in your life. But if you can, if you can focus on giving um, instead of what you can get, then you'll start to feel your brain start to shift and, and a different side of you will show up. And, and that's what I love creating and with my clients. Now they move forward and similar in our sessions, you know, we clearly move forward in terms of some action steps and that's what I do with my clients as well. And it's awesome to see how they can be stuck for so long. Then in one session you can create the shift within them so then they can take some action and move forward despite feeling some fear, but they can do it from a, a place of, of compassion and love for themselves. And it, it's beautiful to see. And, and that's what I try and create in myself so that I can also be that example. And before you know it, you're going to become a mentor to somebody who needs exactly what you can teach them, which is just, uh, I can't even tell you how rewarding it is, Tyson, to have a, a client like you who's so eager to learn and eager to help and eager to make a giant contribution in the world. And so I know I would love to have you um, tell people who it is that you help and how people can get a hold of you. Yeah, sure. So, you know, I help many business owners, mostly digital marketers who are growing their online business. And clearly there's the fears, doubts, and frustrations that come along with growing an online business. Um, So I really help people double their discipline and focus and, and really not only identify, but also solve those unconscious internal conflicts within themselves and so you can find me at www.tysoncoaching.com. Um, you can find it all about me, read all about me. You, when you're reading, you won't, you won't read my crazy Australian accent, which is always a good thing, right? <laughs> it was so funny. I remember I said too, I said, Tyson, it's time for you to get to become a guest on some podcasts. You're like, well, how do I do that? I said, just get busy. You'll figure it out. And now you've been on 10 podcasts already. I listened to one of your interviews recently and I cracked up because you said, Fortnite. Yeah, Fortnite. I mean, <laughs> every two weeks. <laughs> I had no idea. And the guy who was interviewing you said that he like read my mind. He goes, you said Fortnite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, there's some, there's some, sometimes there's a bit of a, uh, bit of a culture barrier between, you know, a lot of my clients are in the States or, or Canada and, you know, there's some, there's some certain things that come up where they're like, what, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was so fun. And I had a total treat uh, a couple of weeks ago. Tyson and his brother were in Toronto for a wedding and we got a chance to meet in person, which was super fun. And it just was, uh, I don't know, it's just amazing. You can work with people online and the connection is, is great. But to have a chance to actually... Um, you know, take some selfies and to meet in person was, was such a blast. Tyson, thank you so much for joining us on Women in the Middle. Your story is so compelling. And ironically enough, there's, there's, we women in the middle have so much in common with you and people your age when it comes to being stuck and being in a transition. Thank you so much for joining us. It was so much fun. Hey, you're very welcome. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for allowing me to share my story and um, hopefully everyone listening can gain some value. And, uh, and like you said, there's some clear similarities with anyone who's going through a transition. So I'm happy, I'm happy to share mine. Take care. Good day. Take care. Bye-bye. That's it for this episode. So many of my clients waste valuable time not understanding the importance of clean mental hygiene. It's so easy to get in your own way when you think thoughts that seem innocent but are really affecting you deeply. You could see that with Tyson's story. It's such a good reminder that if you want to know what you're thinking, just look around, look at the results you have in your life. That's the biggest clue you have, really. Your thoughts create your feelings. The way you feel drives what you do or don't do. And what you do creates your personal results. That's what happens. So you can see that your results will actually prove your thoughts. 
So what you have or don't have in your life can be tied back to your thinking every day of the week. If you like what you've heard, just head over to the Women in the Middle podcast on iTunes and leave me a review. Those reviews put a smile on my face and they really do help other women know that this is a podcast worth listening to. Check out the show notes with more information and links at www.susierosenstein.com. So my amazing women in the middle, it's so important to allow yourself time to think and reflect about what you want going forward. You owe it to yourself. Ask yourself, do you wish you could actually fall in love with your life, especially your 50s? I'm pretty excited about my new coaching program called the 50 Unplugged Mastermind. It's perfect for you when you believe you're older and wiser and you're ready to finally put your own needs on the priority list. For a change, I might add. It's all about celebrating opportunity. It's about unplugging from the stereotypes about what you can't do because of your age and confidently focusing on what you can do regardless of how old you are, regardless of how fearful you are about the change. It's about possibility, growth, excitement, and freedom. How great is that really, right? And the best part, you get to be part of an amazing community of women who want the same thing. Learn more about this unique and totally fun year-long coaching experience for women who are turning 50 or in their 50s and are committed to getting excited about their lives again. Is this you? If it is, get going. We need you in this program. You've waited long enough. It's time to celebrate opportunity in your 50 unplugged life. Go ahead and apply already. Just go to www.talktosuzy.com. You really can create that life you've always wanted. Don't waste another minute. Just get your application in. There are limited spots, and I am really excited about your application coming in. Let's do this, ladies, one amazing thought at a time. Thanks so much for listening.